it's just gone a little bit more public uh, and a little bit more cyber, but the actual core of um, the the cruelty that you see in the show, it, it's like a call for kindness was as true then as it is now. Hi, Ken. Hi, Samir. Hi. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. A pleasure to talk to you both. Uh, Samir, another great series. I love Tell Me Lies. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I like this one too. So, Kim, what was about the book from Rebecca that got your attention to adapt to, to, the, to the big small screen, let's say? <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously, this is like such a fascinating story that when I even just heard about the book, um, I was like so intrigued. I couldn't believe I had never heard the story before. Um, but in reading it, I think what really hooked me and made me want to make this show was the voice of her book, that it was so sensitive and there was so much tenderness to it, that there was actually like a tremendous amount of, of beauty and like wonder of childhood within a story about a really brutal crime. Um, and I think that was really what made me fall in love with the book and I, I, yeah, I think it's a very important story, and I'm I'm I feel very honored that I got the chance to tell it. Yeah, it's so it's so beautiful. I I really enjoy, especially the music that you guys decided to put it. Oh, yeah, amazing, <laughs> so good. So, uh, uh, Samir, to find the perfect Rebecca Riley, what was about her previous work that made you guys pick her to to play Rebecca? She can really just do so much with so much subtlety. She's such a nuanced performer. Um, you know, I remember sometimes on set, we would ask her to perform some incredibly complicated emotion <laughs> that had like kind of 12 layers to it. And with like one flick of the eyes, she would do it all. And it was in particular in this show is really important because it is a, a show that is so much about emotion more than it is really any of the events that happened. And, you know, sometimes a story is told with something just as simple as a small gesture. And I think Riley in particular has a, a unique ability to kind of dial up and down the whole spectrum of human emotion um, with, you know, kind of an effortless quality. And another powerhouse is Lily. She's amazing. And what was about her that made you guys speak her? Quinn? Oh, well, I think, you know, when I was writing Cam, I didn't have anybody, like, I didn't have a, an actor in mind for the role um, when I was working on the pilot. And it was actually Rebecca Godfrey who said to me that her friend had worked behind the scenes on Martin Scorsese's new film and that there was an actress in it who might be perfect. So she actually said, hey, you should look up this actress, Lily Gladstone. And I looked her up and I saw her in Certain Women and then Samir watched Certain Women as well. And... I, I think in a lot of ways, Lily like could not have been more what we were picturing the whole time. Like she just yeah. was like you wrote actress. you wrote Pam and just like created <laughs> Lily somehow. Yeah. Whoa. Um, and I think that like similarly, you know, Lily has so much emotion that she brings so subtly. I also think that she can play so many layers, like where her character is about, she puts on one face when she's at work and with her family, and then she has another self that's deep within. And Lily just instantly was able to bring all of that to the screen. And yeah, we kind of lucked out with our adult Yeah, cast. we really did. <laughs> the story sets in 1997, and then we go back you know, to 79, and then mm -hmm. the 80s, and all this. I love that. How was like the challenge there to to keep like consistent on the the story? I know that sometimes the episode doesn't relate to each other, but how was that going to British Columbia and then come back? And then, <laughs> can you oh, tell yeah. a little bit yeah, about I mean, it? it it's definitely it's a big expansive show and not only in terms of cast but in terms of timeline of course and we've got multiple um you know time periods going on and cutting between them and it is this kind of complex mosaic but uh we sort of wound it together thematically we always wanted to make sure that the different storylines in the different periods were commenting on each other um and it was really important for us in particular to go into the 70s. Um, we thought that, you know, seeing 
the kind of love story of Suman and Manjeet and kind of, you know, their union is what created Rina. And so really seeing the beginning of that story, I think, you know, it, it really puts the loss into real perspective. And it was really important for us to see them as young people and to see the kind of cycles of um, just kind of what you experience as a young person and how you might pass that down through the generations and how sometimes, you know, parent and child, like they're not communicating, even though they might have gone through the same thing when they were younger, which is thought there was a real poignancy to that kind of story. Yeah, I love it. I also think the cinematography is really beautiful, especially in that episode. Yeah. And I think is how was like the approach and what was like, like the challenge to 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 bring the book to to the screen, uh, Queen. Yeah, um, I mean, it was you know as I said, the thing that really struck me the most about the book was that there was so much poetic nature to it, and I think that that translated visually um, pretty naturally. That we you know we talked about the pilot having these themes of referencing fairy tales because oftentimes fairy tales are about the most terrible thing you can imagine like real fairy tales can be about the most terrible thing you can imagine and they can also have a lot of uh universal stories about like morals and learning and childhood and violence and all of that um and so we came back to that as a as a visual motif in the show as well of wanting to both be referencing like late 90s indie films like Gus Van Sant style you know very gritty very raw very real but also be referencing kind of the beauty and the magic of being a young girl um and yeah, I mean, getting to uh, direct on the show was incredible. The uh, we loved both of our DPs who shot the series, and and yeah, I think we just wanted to stay true to the the book and the nature of the landscape. And yeah, <laughs> they say like nowadays we like the social media, everybody's mean to each other, but back then they are mean girls. Oh my god, yeah. they're like so <laughs> bad. <laughs> I, I remember that those times, but like, how how was like the challenge there to 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 address that? Like, different from from what we see nowadays, Samir. Well, it, it, yeah, I mean, as you said, it was always it was just analog, but you know, <laughs> being cruel uh, was something that's always been around, and yeah, it was an important theme in the show, especially in in the way that it reflects upon today's culture and. The fact that you know, in many ways, we have to ask the question: Have we re have we learned anything in the past twenty five years? Um, it's just gone a little bit more public uh, and a little bit more cyber. But the actual core of um, the the cruelty that you see in the show, it, it's like a call for kindness was as true then as it is now. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I just want to thank you so much for your time, Kim, Samir. I love the series and I hope everybody likes it as well. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. If you like to support or continue to support Journal Camera, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment and share the videos. <laughs>